Are you thinking of learning Beethoven's iconic fur release? It's actually the second very cleverly selected piece in Melanie Spanswick's book, Play It Again Piano. And today, I'd like to give you a sneak preview of how she suggests you might want to practice it. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. This is Tommy's Piano Corner and I'm Tommy. The place for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves the piano, to share tips and ideas of how to get the best from this great hobby. I recently released a video that gave my initial impressions of a set of books by Melanie Spanswick called Play It Again Piano. In the first video, I gave you an overview of the book itself, and then as an example of how each piece is presented, I took you through the detail of how she suggested you tackle the Solfagetto in C minor by C.P.E. Bach. Today, let's have a look at the second piece she proposes, which is Beethoven's Fur release. I have to admit, when I learned piano all of those years ago, I didn't really want to learn this piece properly. I don't know, maybe it's just my memory, but I think like a lot of teenagers, I always wanted people to think I was actually clever and better than I really was. And so Fur release always sounded to be something that was far too simple to sound impressive. And therefore, why should I waste my time trying to learn it? Of course, many beginner books have uh, an abridged version of it that misses out the trickier sections. And when I first learned, I could pretty much sight read these abridged versions. And so that was all I ever really did with it. When I looked at the full version every now and then, I'd sort of just fluff my way through the bits that were a little more difficult. However, with the benefit of age, I think I was actually very wrong to think like this. I mean, first of all, Fur Elise is an absolutely iconic piece of music that everybody knows and everybody loves. And it's one of these things that you can very easily play for people when you need to without having that, that much preparation done all the time. Secondly, as it's relatively straightforward, or at least a lot of it is relatively straightforward, you do get a lot of bang for your practice buck. You'll only really need to spend a lot of time working on the few more tricky sections, and the rest of it, which has got a lot of repeats as well, you should be able to play quite quickly really, so it's a piece you can prepare without needing to spend months over it. And then finally, and this is where I think Melanie was very clever, is that the sections that need more effort to develop, that are a little trickier to play, are the same kind of sections uh, where you'll build technique which will help you with a lot of other pieces. So overall, definitely a very, very good choice of a second piece for this book. So let's have a look then at Melanie's advice for picking up this piece. Of course, it's in A minor, so one of the first things she recommends is to familiarise or re-familiarise yourself with the A minor scales. Next, she says that this piece is ideal for improving your articulation, note repetition, and rhythm. And therefore, she gives a set of practice ideas of how you can do all of these three things using the music in the piece. Another thing she recommends that I'd never really thought about before, to be honest, but was that of trying to maintain a legato line in this piece without using the pedal. Now, I guess I'm a fairly lazy pianist, perhaps, in that I tend not to worry about efficient fingering if the pedal will help me get away with it. Don't get me wrong, I do understand finger substitution, and I sort of use it almost subconsciously sometimes when I know the pedal won't help me get away with it. But otherwise, I've never really worried too much about it when the pedal is there to be used. However, I followed her advice, and to be honest, I did find that it really does improve certain sections of this piece by focusing on keeping, especially the melody part, in a nice singing legato line. She also makes some suggestions about how to avoid tension, especially in the repeated note section. I mean, these were a lot of different stepping stones that I'd not really thought about myself, so I was very grateful for the advice. 
So all in all, I think a fantastic choice of piece. A nice piece of music, something that's got simpler parts that are easy to play, plenty of technical challenges to keep you busy in your practice time. So all in all, full marks to play it again piano for this piece. As I said when I did the write-up of the Solfagetto piece, we all have very different problems or challenges with the way we play piano. And this piece is no different. So there are a few sections where I've needed to work much, much harder than perhaps many people would need to to get them right. For me, the biggest challenges are, of course, the 32nd note section, which is really quite quick and you need nimble fingers to play that properly. I also have quite a lot of trouble with the repeated notes section. And not only the repeated notes in the left hand, but also getting the melody in the right hand played properly as well. And finally, I have problems with that arpeggiated figure in the right hand, which is the A minor arpeggio going up. I have difficulty getting that smooth and even. So for the 32nd note section, as I said before, my passage work has always really been fairly poor. This really is, is not a lot more than scales. I mean, the first part is a scale that ascends from G upward using your thumb and punctuated with a top G in your pinky. And then the next part of it is little more than a C major scale descending from C right down to D. And then instead of finishing on the C, just jumping back up to the G. I've always found this little part a bit tricky to pull off and it's one of those pieces that, as I said before, I always fluffed my way through, didn't really worry about the fact it wasn't very even, didn't really put any effort or time into trying to even it out. To try and correct this, what I've done is use the different touches and rhythms idea that I've spoken about before. In fact, the idea of touches, or part of this idea anyway, came from Melanie herself, where she recommends starting to play things that need to be played quickly and lightly, strongly and slowly, which would seem counterintuitive, but I've noticed that in actual fact this does pay dividends, and when you practice deliberately and slowly, as you lighten your touch later on, the evenness is definitely better. For the repeated notes, I opted for slightly different fingering that was suggested. I've sort of gone for a 4-3-2-1-2-1 fingering. Otherwise, I basically followed all of Melanie's practice advices of how to get this better. Then finally, for that A minor arpeggiated figure, I've been experimenting with something that, at least for me, is different than I've ever tried before. I was always taught when doing an arpeggio that you should bring your thumb under your palm to maintain some semblance of legato when you're playing. However, I've seen in a few reputable places that there's an alternative technique which involves using a slight rotation of your forearm to lift your thumb up and then as you move your hand across the piano, you'd use the rotation in the opposite direction to drop the thumb back onto the key. So that way your thumb barely moves under your palm at all. I've been finding this tricky to do. I have to admit, it sort of has a tendency to make the arpeggio more jerky, if anything, at first. But I've noticed it's still improving, so perhaps with a little time this will come good. So I'm going to persevere with it for a while. So far then, Play It Again Piano really hasn't disappointed. Already, just in having worked on these first two pieces, I can feel that I've made some definite improvements. Even better, I've now got two pieces that are great to wheel out at any time when you get that familiar request from friends to play something for us. I'm now working also on the song Without Words and the study by Berens. So stay tuned and there'll be videos on each of these coming out over the next few weeks. You can get Melanie's Play It Again Piano on Amazon, of course. I've put a link to it below for you so you can find it quickly enough. 
If you're not already, then do subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner. Click the little bell icon so you're notified of new videos as they're released. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next week.